But I would like to uh, start off talking about that. Why credentialing? Why, why do you, you young people, you young people to the field, need to be concerned about credentialing? From my vantage point, and I introduced myself earlier, 25 plus years of being a clinical psychologist, I really think young professionals miss a lot of opportunities to build credential and credibility by not seeking out credentialing by an association, psychi association, belonging to the APA, et cetera, et cetera. Let's face it, you've, you've made a, a, a fantastic step by going to a university like this and getting a, a name degree behind you. Why do you do that? Because you know that that's going to put you in a good position for the competition in the fields that you go into. It's very important to look for other credentials, other ways in which you can be competitive as well. So because, look at you're going to be competing with all your classmates as well once you're, you're out. I feel, again, from my vantage point, that because of the social and economic conditions now, right now in our society, and all over the world for that matter, professionals need to be accountable more than ever of who they are, what their training has been, what I bring to the table, whether that be with an individual client or with an organization. And I think there's uh, four major reasons why that accountability is so incisive now in the world. And Obviously, the first one is the economic conditions. People are pinched for money. People are uh, pinched on the resources that an organization has to hire professionals. They're going to put their money in people that have the highest amount of credentials, experience, training, etc. Who you be in, adore, endorsed by. The general public's increased intelligence and awareness of choices in professional services. We've never seen that before. When I first got into healthcare, people wouldn't ask the same kind of questions they do now about insurance and co-pays and, and this and that. Well, they're doing that for services at all kinds of levels. Who are you? What do you, again, bring to the table? Who endorses you? Obviously, the internet and the information highway. The general public can look you up in a second and Google you and, and find out all kinds of things about you. You want to be different than the person that you're competing with. And just ever-changing social trends. You want to be ahead of those trends. You want to be cutting edge by associating yourself with organizations that provide that for you. You can stay on top of the trends and, and the um, necessities of the, the marketplace. So it's really vital for you to set yourself apart from the competition. And you create the most attention for your expertise by getting a stamp of approval from the highest association that governs your, your particular field. So go for that. This university is a start, but it goes beyond that in terms of you build and build and build your career. Here's some facts. The more credential the professional is, the more money you can come in. The more credentialed you are, the more career advancement you can make. Higher academic positions, higher positions in associations and you know, organizations. And finally, the more credentialed you are as a professional, the more clients will seek you out. Because again, I want to go to somebody for my child, for myself, that has the highest credentials in the field. I'd like to give a couple examples that might illustrate that, and bear with me, and they might a little be a little tongue-in-cheek, but um, let's say you have an itchy, ugly, pus-oozing rash on your face, and you want this gone yesterday. You know, it's right there on your face, and you don't want to wait around for, you know, and go to the local dock in a box, and, you know, maybe uh, you can try this and try that and come back next week. You want to go to a board certified dermatologist who you can be assured is on top of their game, know, will know exactly what this is, and will give me some instant relief credentials. Let's, let's bring it down to an everyday or household example. 
you go to a hardware store because you want to get an extension cord for your, your child's bedroom, your precious child's bedroom. You go to the counter, you go into the bins where they have the extension cords, which extension cord are you going to buy? Is it going to be the one that has that ISO certified tag on it? Someone saying this is a safe and reliable extension cord with electricity, something that scares me, by the way. Electricity? Or are you going to get one with no tag on, hasn't been certified by someone, and put that in your child's room? That's about credentialing. So you got to think about it. It's not just becoming an extension cord. It's not just becoming psychologist, but who's endorsing it? Who's saying you got all the right stuff? Certainly this university is going to say that. And that day you graduate and get your, your is it still onion skin? I doubt it. Um, but who else is endorsing it? What makes you different? I just want you to think that. I think given the choice, consumers go for choices that are certified and are credentialed. So just wanted you to think about that. And